This is the NFL Recap. Week number nine. Week nine. Before we get started, let's thank Tunica Travels, Tunica, Mississippi, all the sports books down in Tunica. We appreciate the sport. Go see them. Go visit them. Tell them we said hello. TunicaTravel.com. I, I feel like the only proper and appropriate place to pl- to start the recap is we got to go all the way back to Thursday night. And we got to talk about Nick Mullins. <laughs> Southern Mississippi's Nick and, Mullins. And how much of a grown-ass man that guy is. Now, was he was he just good because he was playing the Raiders? Or See, I don't know. No, no. You don't get thrown into an NFL game like that and, and, and show out the way he did. 200-plus yards, 230-something yards, three touchdowns. I think he's good. I think he's I think he's going to be one of these guys that listen. We've seen other quarterbacks in this league not be good at all. We've watched quarterbacks for this team not be nearly as good as him. Agree. So, I I was excited. I I liked seeing him. I kind of have a question, okay? A couple of these I want to give some scenarios and stuff we'll go through. Is is it how many more games in a row does he have to win before they give him a hundred and fifty million dollar contract? Well, no, no. That's that's <laughs> see, so but you're thinking along the lines of what I am thinking is how many more games does he have to look like this before you free up that hundred and fifty million and you sell Jimmy Garoppolo to the highest bidder? Would anybody take Jimmy G on that contract? Uh, Jacksonville. Um, well, I don't know if they've got the cap space. Man, mm, that's a different. Oh, Cleve. Oh, yeah. I don't know. No, nah, I mean they just they, they put everything they had into Baker. They just fired a coach over Baker. I don't. I don't know the answer to that. I think there is a quarterback out there. There is somebody out there that would take him. I don't know who that is right now. Now, at the same time, would you keep Jimmy G on that contract and maybe trade Nick Mullins nah, for cheap, cheap? You better get a king's ransom because cheap, that's what I'm saying. Cheap quarterbacks are how you win Super Bowl. You want to know who needs a trade for for Jimmy G? We'll get to him later. Dallas Cowboys. I, I, hey, they, okay. They need a quarterback. Sorry, uh, yeah. sorry, Dak friends. They need are we are we already moving to Monday? No. Okay. Oh yeah. You know what? <laughs> yep. All right, let's jump from Thursday to Monday. Let's go. Let's let's go from Thursday to Monday. Also, How about when Tennessee when we Titans? get to our let's let's stay on that that Thursday night game. When we get to our top five, bottom five, if you have not corrected yourself yet, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> I'm just gonna be upset, and you we'll, need to we'll understand to that. that. We'll get to that in the next segment. Let's It'll be let's fine. move on to last night. We do this on Tuesday evenings. The Titans completely had their way with the Cowboys. And this is after bumbling the entire first quarter. They looked lost. They they turned the ball over every possession for like three or four in a row, and the Cowboys could do nothing with it. They handed them the ball on the 20-yard line and said, here, have it. Yeah. And the Cowboys came away with no points from all those turnovers. They had one great drive to start the game. They got Cooper the ball in the end zone. Congratulations. They still only scored 14 points, and like I said a couple of weeks ago from Jake and Lo- Jason Lock and Fora with CBS, CBS does the sports line, and the sports line analyst said he will add 0.0% to them being better. I think they scored yeah. 14 without him. I think uh, they forced, yeah, I go with that. forced him the ball to prove that it was the right move. Oh, and everybody knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Everybody knew that Jerry was going to do that. Jerry True. Jones told Jason Garrett immediately. You, you find Cooper Get early him the ball. and often because we have to have people understand this move was right and the rest of their offense is still not good. Zeke, I have no idea how you can have Zeke. You got to make me look good, Garrett. And he can't do anything. <laughs> he looked great in the first half and well, he touched it. the ball like six times in the second. Yeah, that, now that I don't understand. I, I think... You know, we want to talk about the we, the the media narrative is that the Cowboys have a pretty good offensive line, and I don't know that I buy that. Well, okay, they used to. No, nope, I don't know that anybody's saying that they've got a great one now. They did at one point in time have a well, great. I, I one. didn't say a great one. I just said a good one. And I, I don't I'll know that they've this, even got a good offensive. Com- line. Okay, if we're going to compare them to the rest of the league, man, there's like seven or eight teams that have some of the worst offensive line play I've ever seen We've in my We've talked life. about this before this season where they they probably have an above average offensive line compared to compared to other if, teams. if but, we're if we're doing the measuring stick as to all the other 32, I I think they're above the Mason Dixon line. But depending on who you play against and the Titans have got some pass oh, no. Like look at like Harold Landry's a real dude. We talked you know, about like, this Tennessee team. Yeah. 
just two weeks to prepare was anybody at all surprised that the Titans went in and their coaching staff with two weeks to prepare for this team just far more prepared looked way better they had I, I can't explain what was going on offensively in the first three drives I, I, I can't speak to that I know this after they stopped doing that they they just owned the Cowboys at every well, facet it, of the game. Is it not kind of funny that, like, it, obviously the first bit of the game is when it's scripted, right? Yeah. So when they got away from the scripted stuff, they looked immensely better. Well, I don't know about that because I think from what I've I've heard and read about NFL coaches is it's like the first 15 to 17 plays are scripted. I, I think even if you don't get – 15 plays and three drives, you're you're still going to go with the script. I, I think they have a really good offensive coordinator. I think he's a good offensive mind. I don't know how good Mariota really is. I think he shows flashes of great. And then he shows flashes of just, I don't fi- I can't figure out what he's trying to do. And I don't know what, maybe not what he's trying to do. I don't know what he's capable of doing. Yeah. But I'll tell you this, against the Cowboys, a, a guy like Mariota, you know, he whipped their butt. Yeah. Now, you're right about that. So, let's move on to the next game, which was supposed to be the clash of the two best quarterbacks in football. One guy showed up. The other guy, I, I, don't, I don't know where he was, but, but, <laughs> but he wasn't, he wasn't you, real good. You enjoyed this a lot, we're, didn't you? We're talking about the Patriots. We're talking about the Green Bay Packers and Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron was good. He he wasn't anything special, and Tom was great, and and not that Tom did anything spectacular. You know who was amazing? Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels. That, that's yeah. that's who was amazing. Cordell Patterson has been passed around this league. Yeah, I, I want to say something inappropriate that he would pass around. <laughs> um, but but he has been moved around, and nobody everyone sees his talent and says, man. What what could you do with this guy if we could just figure out what he's – Bill says, hey, he's really good. Let's just hand him hey, – okay, so he can't – he's not a good wide receiver. Why isn't he a good wide receiver? Maybe, maybe he struggles with catching the ball. Maybe he's not good at running routes. So let's, let's not ask him to run routes. Let's give him the ball behind the line of scrimmage and let's say, go, man, go. It's a genius move. I mean, we talked about this for a couple of weeks now. And he is – like, he's a superb athlete. Obviously – there's a reason why he does so well with uh, with special teams play, right? That's so, right. So just turn every play into a special teams play. And, and make every team – and when he touches the ball, every play is special. I yeah. mean, they really are. There was a power run where they ran it between the guards, and he lowered his shoulders and was dragging linebackers and people grabbing his shirt tail and pulling it off of him from behind. He's carrying people three or four yards. They, they found what he's good at. I want to I want to address something of where all the Aaron Rodgers apologists came out the woodworks and was just immediately well look at the talent that he has around him they do it every week but you know what let's let's address that because no Sony Michelle no Gronk look at the talent Tom had nobody on the planet would have touched Josh Gordon a couple weeks ago Bill said I can fix him um and he and he did and and he wasn't that great everywhere else at, at Cleveland just like Randy when he went to Oakland yeah was was just a complete shell of himself uh Cordell Patterson we we talked about him I don't know how good James White would be in any other offense whatsoever I don't know how good Julian Edelman would be in any other offense Julian Edelman in all intents and purposes is no different than Jordy Nelson he, yeah. he he's he's lost his burst to where he really can't get open he's good at making trash catches he catches the ball like even when he's covered Tom's got to get it to him pretty well, and, uh, and 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 he's fiery, he's feisty, but he doesn't have like explosive speed. He's he's you can cover him pretty easily. Yeah, but well, that's, see, that's the thing with the Patriots. Obviously, you Devontae don't have, to have Adams, explosive speed. Devontae Adams is without question the best skill player on both sides of the ball. Well, you know what's funny? Like Chris Hogan forever was like their deep threat. That's right. Chris Hogan doesn't have explosive speed. No, no, he's like, not really fast at all. It, it's not anything about like speed or whatever. It is. Game planning. That's it right. is finding a way to finding to what your guys defense. are good at and and, yeah. and making them better. And Chris Hogan can absolutely run a route to perfection. He can 
if he if sells you were it. if you were to take the special players, the skill players for the Packers and flip them and take all the jerseys off and say, all right, you now get the Patriot players that we that the Pats had to dress, <laughs> and then and, and then the, let and Tom, Mike McCarthy Tom, coach that yeah, bunch. For and a week. Tom gets Tom gets the the Green Bay Packer players. A Devontae Adams might be the third or fourth best receiver that Tom's ever had to throw to. Yeah. So so let's let's be real careful before we start calling everybody crap. And all those other guys, all of a sudden, you know who they are. These running backs, you get way more out of them. This is X's and O's. I don't know that this is McCarthy's a bad coach. There are people saying that he's probably going to be fired at the end of the year or let go, not not resign, not brought back. I don't know that he that changing him fixes their problems. It, it's kind of an understood thing. He's not returning next year. Who do they go get? Who do they think is going to be the answer? I mean, everybody talks about, like, you know, oh, imagine them in, like, a Kyle Shanahan. So, like, who's the next young guy? But well, you're think, not going and getting well, Kyle, think, and you're not that, getting McVay. I mean, I think I don't that know. batch is done. Like, I think I think your your crop of next good is Green head Bay is willing done. to go into college and get a college coach? And is Aaron Rodgers going to respond to that? This is my other problem with Rodgers. How old he is doesn't, Aaron Rodgers? He doesn't say. Uh, 34, I mean, 5? In mid 30s, early 30s, probably. I don't, I don't, I'm really bad at that game. Yeah, hey, you go ahead and keep talking. But, I'm a fan. But my it. other issue with him is, is how coachable is he? I mean, he's got all the talent in the world. I, I don't knock his ability whatsoever. But, but he takes up way too much of the salary cap for them to build a team around him for anybody to complain. Well, look who he's got around him. And B, I don't, I don't know that he's very coachable. I wonder sometimes possible. if if he, you know he just he's just such raw talent. He is thirty four years old. Okay, all right. Thank God, that much. that just makes me feel like complete crap. God, his birthday is December second, nineteen eighty three. <laughs> Mine's January eleventh, nineteen eighty three. I'm like I'm almost a year older than Aaron friggin' Rogers. Nah, 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 how, nah, how did this happen? Just our different lot in life. How did so, this happen? That's that's it. Do you have anything else you want to add to to this game and what you think happened? No, I mean we know exactly what happened. Like I, I don't think Mike McCarthy is is a very good head coach. I think I, he's okay. I don't he's know that serviceable. He's, bad. he's not. No, he's not bad. Like, but he look. Hugh Jackson is bad. I don't. We, we've I don't, seen don't, bad head coaches. I don't know that Green Bay is any better with. Every coach in the league, other than maybe the top five or six, but that's what I'm saying. Okay, like it's a, they don't have a ton of of overall talent. Part of that is because of Aaron Rodgers' huge contract and whatever, and and their draft picks. Eh, I mean, they're they're hitting about 500 on those. You know, and, and okay, and there's so the like, difference is before they drafted guys and they went about seven eight years. How they built that team that won the Super Bowl a while back was. All through the draft. There yeah. were no free agent guys. They just bring in their own dudes. And when you get to be a free agent, you walk off and we bring in somebody else. Yeah. And they haven't hit on those dudes. No, not not nearly as much as they did. Um, but, you know, I think, I mean, it, you have to have a superb head coach to be able to make up for the talent deficiencies that they have. I disagree and it's, with and, that. And, and when you on, have Aaron Rodgers, they don't when you have, have a great quarterback, you don't have to have a superb head coach. Was he a superb head coach when he won the Super Bowl with them? Okay, look, look, look. And well, he just, at, that he point, he, at that point, he just got hot. Like, I think he, that was a 9-7 and seven football team. How, how is it that you have Aaron Rodgers and you say he has to have a superb head coach? Was Tom Coughlin a superb head coach when when Eli won two Super Bowls? Do you think that Tom Brady is half the quarterback he is if he's not playing in Belichick's system? Yeah, I really do. I think he's still just as good. He might not have as many rings. He might not have as many Super Bowls, but he goes to just as many AFC championship games. He might lose to the Belichick coach team. But, yeah, I absolutely think he's just as good. I don't know, man. I I think Belichick is – like, and, it, and it's not just that. I think, you know, Atlanta – Back when Shanahan was there, I mean, you can you can see the difference. Like oh, Matt Ryan, no one puts more no one puts more emphasis on coaching than I do when I'm when I make my picks, when I talk about these teams, when I look at teams that I say this team is good, this team is bad. It it's it's ninety percent of it's all based on coaching when everybody else is looking at quarterbacks. Okay, I I that, understand that there is a valid difference when you have do do you think the coaching around Peyton Manning was great? Forget about how much we all love Dungy. Okay. Yeah. Do we think the coaching around Peyton Manning was 
just unbelievable. Because I think McCarthy's better than all of the guys that ever coached Peyton. I don't know that I agree with that. Well, Dungey was a defensive guy. No, no, so no, no, you, no forget so that, Dungey. So I'm not talking about head coach. Uh, forget head coach. I'm talking about the offensive guys around him. No, the offensive I, guys around around Aaron Rodgers are far better than anything Tom Brady had. Or no, anything that, that, uh, that Peyton Manning had. And guess what? He still won a lot more than, than Aaron Rodgers has won. And, and he's got more Super Bowl rings with multiple yeah. teams. I mean, you might be right. I, I, got, my, I got my feelings on it. Um, okay. But I mean, it, look. I just don't all, think all you of it's can a moot point you're, you're, because, like, it's they're, well, they're, three, they're not they got very three, good. They got three wins. Yeah, they they're should, three and they four. They should have. They should have one less than that. They told the Bears totally gave one game away. Yeah. So I mean, they're they're three, four, and one. Uh, they tied against the Vikings. Probably, you know, should have lost that. Or I mean, even still, they probably should have won that one. Like, it just depends on how you look at it. So maybe maybe a tie is good. But the Bears game, yeah, they probably should have lost that one. Uh, I mean, they're they got to win over Buffalo. They're not a good team. Like it's this is not a a great team, and they're ten point favorites this week. Yeah, and so all right, let's let's move on to the other great game, and this this really was a great game. You want to talk about two best running backs in football went up against each other, two really good top level quarterbacks went up against each other, and two incredible head coaches went up against each other in the Rams Saints game. Yes, this. This was a football game that was – it looked like the Saints were going to run away with it. They were up like 35 – they were up by 21 points, something like that, 17 points, going into halftime. And it looked yeah. like they were going to run away with it. Rams came back. Rams countered. They tied it up. I mean, this was a great game back and forth. I believe the outcome of the game came on those three individuals. I think Alvin Kamara outplayed Todd Gurley. Yeah. I think Drew Brees outplayed golf, which no one no one expected anything less than that. Golf is really good. Especially golf, in New Orleans. Golf has done great. He ain't Brees yet. Not yet. And Give I, him time. And I think Sean Payton totally out-schemed, out-coached, and, and, and out-worked uh, Sean McVay. You realize it was just a few years ago that everybody was talking about Payton retiring or maybe Payton taking like the USC job? Yeah. I mean, it, how goofy does well, he, that all look he, Him and the ownership of the Saints didn't really mess real well for a while. Well, now Tom Benson is uh, yeah. gone. R.I.P. Yep. And, and, uh, uh, and now Peyton looks is, like those is, things are happening. Peyton living his best life. Let me, let me ask a question. Does Sean Payton remind you of Mike Gundy at all? I was thinking about this on Sunday. Yeah, he's definitely got that. He he I looks give, give, acts well, like he, he he he's got the I give no f's about yeah. Mike Gundy when he <laughs> talks. He he does not care what you think about him. Maybe less than Bill. Maybe less than anybody. Yeah, you know what I he agree. does though, and, and this is brought up all the time. He learned this from Bill Parcells, who Belichick learned from Parcells as well, and, and a lot of guys in the NFL. That's the coaching tree that people really want to look at. Is you can't coach scared. And that guy That's just true. does. He is completely fearless. So I've got a stat from this that I want to throw at you. Okay. I, I, I'm stealing this from giving him all the credit. This is Kevin Clark from The Ringer. I, I listen to him. I like him a lot. Uh, I think he's really smart. Very well written. Go read his articles. Um, there are only two players in history, 23 and younger, to have three games of three touchdowns in a single season. One of them is Alvin Kamara. Do you know who Alvin Kamara is tied with in that? Three. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Three, three games. With three touchdowns. With three touchdowns in a single season under 23 years old. Is it? Is it another running back? Is this only running well, yes, back? Yes, it is another running back. Man, I have no idea. I will give you a hint. He He is in many people's eyes the greatest football player to ever play football. Uh, Alvin Kamara Jim, Jim Brown? and Jim Brown. Jim Brown. They're the okay. only two people at that age to be that good. It's, you said the greatest football player ever to play, and I'm like, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of those. No, no, there's not. No, <laughs> but, no, no, but, but no the there's that, not. The one that everybody no, says. No, I was going to say, I, yeah. no, I, will, I will argue with that. There, there is not a lot of those. It doesn't it's, matter what position it is, and it doesn't matter what well, quote, no, I mean, unquote, there's, there's era we're watching. Jerry Rice, nope, Joe nope, Montana, nope, nope, you know, no, nope, not even close. We're not even. But, not but even you're right, Jim, Jim Brown. Yeah, the right. the single toughest man on the planet when he was playing. You get to right. he's, um, he's still tough, man. He's you're 
He's you're talking about sit outside and threaten to fight everybody outside. He's the got stadium. he's got three touchdowns in three games. At this, it's early, man. Uh, I yeah. mean, I think I think he is elite level good, and and I don't know that it matters what system, quote unquote, he's playing in. I I think it does. I know matter. I know he like he benefits from being in the Saints, but I think if you trade at places with him and Melvin Gordon, and he goes to like the Chargers. Man, I I think he's just as good. Now I now, think I now, think it does Melvin matter which one obviously increases. Well, yeah, no, no. Here's I I think it does matter because we saw him at Tennessee, like when he was in college. He's he's completely different player than he but, was in college. But but he was completely misused. Like they there were glimpses of it because there were times that the offensive coordinator in, in the would, like, in, let in the loose. NFL right now, if he was on any roster. He's touching the ball 30, 40 times, catching, receiving, uh, and running the ball. And and it doesn't matter. If he's on the Colts, I don't think he's that good. Oh, I disagree. Completely disagree. You see what Mack is doing on the Colts? He is 100 times better the runner Mack is. And he gives them a dump-off option to where when he catches the ball and you throw it to him, he's taking it for 20, 30. I mean, you got a point. No, and he's mowing people over and he's breaking tackles. I mean, I I think that kid is a truck. I think he's unbelievable. He's he's my most exciting player to watch this year. Now we'll give you that. Everybody, not this is not a knock on the other guys. If you told me you you can only watch one player this Sunday, who is it? I'm watching Alvin over Patrick Mahomes. I mean, that, that that's probably the list is those guys right now. Todd, I mean, Todd Gurley's, Gurley's probably there, in. Yeah. No, Todd Gurley's in that. I I and this is my I think I would I would watch Alvin. You say you I only can, got one game. I can you totally go with one that. guy. I'm, I'm going with him. So let's go to the Rams a little bit. Let me Rams value in. They got three special people that matter. I think more than anyone else to their winning and losing. And and I brought them up earlier in how I think they all got outplayed in this game. But it is McVay. It is golf. And it is Gurley. If you had to keep one and lose the other two to a team in your division that you have to play twice a year. Who do you keep and who do you give up? To a team in your division. So you know if you give up Gurley or Golf or McVay, you have to play against them, coach against them twice a year and beat them to win your division. I would give up Golf. Who do you keep? You only keep oh, one. Oh, you only keep one. You oh, only okay. keep oh, one. Oh, God. Well, I'd keep McVay. I, I think I'd, I'd keep McVay, too. I think, but this it's I, not even, I value, it's not even close. I value coaching more than everybody else. So, it's a, it's. I mean, it's a quarterback league, and there's a lot of teams out there that say, you know what, if you're Jacksonville right now, you'd take golf and the coaching staff they got and let Gurley and McVay go to one of the other teams in the division, and you just take your chances. Yeah, I mean – I mean, there, there are teams that are built that are say, hey – We'd, we'd kill for that guy. I I think – all right, so back to Green Bay. I think Green Bay with McVay would be otherworldly. Well, yeah, but let's, you got to take I, Aaron off of it. Oh, but you're talking about, like, okay. Hey, yeah, okay. I'm, you, I'm can't, you can't say, yeah, McVay with the, the second-best quarterback in football. Well, I thought you were just talking about the Rams. Well, okay, I, I, I am in this scenario, but, like, I don't know. I, I agree. We we both agree, but I'm just trying to figure out. It's just a quarterback league. There are teams that don't have a quarterback that would kind of kind of kill for golf. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I just I know what golf is without Sean McVay. Like I've seen that before. Like I don't think he was that great at Cal under Sonny Dykes. It's, Dyke, it's impossible a, a, to grade him what he was like under Fisher, though. That, I mean, that, yeah, no, that you're is, right about that. That is not that is not okay to do. So anyway, th- th- those were the biggest games. We'll, we'll get through some other ones. This is kind of an interesting game. We, while we're giving up <laughs> weird, strange scenarios and, and and whatnot, let's let's get to let's get to the Bills Bears game because I have a scenario with that. First off, Bears looked really good. They went on the road. They beat a bad team. They beat the hell out of them. Uh, yeah. I mean, they did what you're supposed to do to a bad team, right? Uh, they the Bears are looking really good right now. I, 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 it's it's like, hard to say, well, but they did it to the Bills. But that's what you're supposed to do, and a lot of other teams don't. It, exactly. They right? have well, and, and look, the Bills still have a pretty good defense. That's right. Oh, no, the fact that they put up that many points. Now, they did it all thanks to thanks to Peterman. 
Uh, yeah, not all of it, but a lot of it. Man, a lot of turnovers. A lot of pick. The defense scored what two or three times? At least two. I think it was. I think it was just two. Um, anyway, and then maybe got a short field on another or something like that. So, so first things first. Last year, I destroyed Deshaun Kaiser. I labeled him the single worst quarterback to ever start the NFL. Now he is the worst that's ever going to start and play as many games as he played. Like, he played yeah. the entire season. Even games he didn't start, he got in. Yeah. There were, there were all 16 games he played meaningful minutes in all 16 games. I mean, think about that. Like, your your top two quarterbacks were, he's, were Kevin Hogan. He's the worst. <laughs> and Deshaun guys. He's, like he's the worst. It's not close. But. People want to talk about the Browns being bad this year. They don't Peter, remember last year. Peterman is getting really dangerously close to being Deshaun Kaiser bad. Uh, no, I think Peterman's worse. I think he's. I think he, and that is a very difficult thing to be. But like, when you cannot stop throwing interceptions, like your offensive coordinator is is actively trying to find routes to like just all you got to do is put it there. And, and, it, and it doesn't help him that that is without question the worst receiving core in the NFL. Uh, so yes. that, that's not that's not helping him at all. But but I want to. You wanna, know how much better Sammy Watkins feels. <laughs> God, yeah. So, so let me let me give you a different scenario. Okay. I, I want a wild card weekend in the NFL. You know, we have the bye week between the championship games and the Super Bowl. Yeah. And there's no football, and 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 it was the Pro Bowl sometimes, and I it's just garbage. I want I want the two losers of the championship teams to play each other. But we're gonna have a real wild. We're gonna have to change the wild card to something else because this is a wild card. A wild card is something that is thrown into a game that completely changes the game. Correct? And okay. every game you play, I would like Nate Peterman to sit in one of the end zones in a big throne with two different jerseys, one for both of the teams. They have to play to win. The winner of the team. Now I know we think quarterbacks make twenty, thirty million a year, and so they don't care about money. Many, 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 many of these players don't. Every person on the roster makes $5 million bonus if you win the game. So everybody's trying to win the game. Okay. The caveat is, is Peterman has to play quarterback for one full series, at least three consecutive downs in each half for both teams. You get to, you as the coach get to pick it. <laughs> now, you can't just kneel him out, walk him out there at the end of a half and kneel. Unless you, you know, you got to actually you gotta, like you actively run, try and run. You got to run three play. Now you can be three handoffs. That's fine. Yeah, but at, at how much would that change? Like what an offense is doing, and when do you throw them out? Did you just say, hey, let's let's just take the first possession and give it up? In yeah, the first I mean, half, I'd probably do in the, the first, first of the second half. That's or do you say, hey, let's get out hot. Let's get all right. Now we got like a ten point lead going into halftime. Let's give him. Let's give him the last possession or a uh, late possession because okay, so now I'm, I'm up 14 points. If it, but if you're up 14, like it, you you don't want to get behind the eight ball. So if you throw a pick six, that's that's the problem. If you give trouble. him, if you give it to him first and he turns the ball over, just fumbling the snap. Like there were things that weren't his fault, but it was like Nate Peterman is the quarterback. I have to go to a defensive player. And so it hits receivers in the hands, and it's like they just handed it to the DB. Yeah, it's it, it's other world stuff right that's, now. That's that's the problem. If you start out early, now you now you now you're fighting, and then you know you got to put him back in in the second half once too. Good gracious, that's a wild card game. Yeah, that's, we have that's we have Kaiser and Peterman, and they have to play series for your team. <laughs> so the quarterbacks make a ton of money, so they don't matter. So they don't play this game, and you just have to play with these two jamokes. And the other team is just fighting like hell to try to win because they're broke. Well, they're not broke, but they want some. They want some money. I like this idea. I, I think the NFL is pretty greedy. I think this would like bring ratings galore. I can't I would help. Watch it. I can't help but watch Peterman. Like, oh, it's, like it's I'll crazy. tell you this: as much as I like watching Kamara, uh, I don't know that I didn't watch more snaps of the Bills. I like it. Anyway, I like it. Thought that was interesting. We'll move on. We're going to cover some ground here with these. Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield look really bad. Yeah. Both of their teams are really bad. And their offensive coaches might be the two worst in the NFL. Yeah. Could this year be so detrimental to their development that they never recover? No. I don't think so. Or either one of them actually just not very good. I think Darnold is very turnover prone. We saw that at USC. We knew that. 
Mayfield uh, at Oklahoma, like he was playing some ri- – well, it, everywhere that he's been, he has played really, really bad defenses. I think it is taking him a little bit of time to get caught up. Uh, but I do think that Mayfield has, like, the talent to be able to go through this. And and it, it takes time to learn this NFL game. Like, you know that. I understand. Uh, uh, unless you are, like, a – That's why I'm a fan of these guys sitting for a while, by the way. Yeah, and that's – I mean, that'd be totally fine. But I don't think there's anything wrong with playing them either. Like, I don't think that it's going to, to crush their spirit. And if you're a competitor, then you're a competitor. It'll help you figure out sooner, like, whether or not they are uh, – whether they've got the, the cojones that's right. to actually play the position – um, so in that regard, like absolutely, I keep playing them. So my my problem with Mayfield Darnold is the future in Cleveland. They have made that abundantly clear. My well, so yeah. my my problem with Darnold was this, and and I there's a reason I didn't want him number one. I didn't want him number two. I didn't want him number three. He would have been my fourth choice in quarterback this draft, and it's strictly because I don't see him as a whole lot different than Jameis Winston. I think he's got all the talent in the world. I don't think you can coach. The throwing the ball to the other team out of a player. I think if yeah. that's in them, it's always going to be in them. Yeah, because they are and, always going and, to think that they right. can fit the ball in that hole. They, they, yeah, they think their talent is better than it is, and they can't be coached or trained out of that. My fear with Baker is this. He played at two schools. Now, while Texas Tech is not a big boy school with five-star talent around him, it's still in the Big 12. At the wide receiver position and the offensive line position, they are great. They are upper level in college football good every year in that air raid system. Yes. And then when he goes to Oklahoma, everybody on the offensive side of the ball are all five stars. Yep. Well, not five I, stars. I but always, you know, better I'm than everybody else. They're, on the they're, field. The, they're the best athletes on the field when they're on the field. Yeah. My problem with taking quarterbacks that play in these systems that make them look so good in college is what do you do when your offensive line sucks? and your receivers aren't great, can you still be good? Because I don't know that, well, this is a rookie year. I don't know that next year or the year after, unless personnel drastically changes, I don't know that they can do that. See, that's like it, that's what made it so easy for Kansas City to move to Patrick Mahomes because they had already moved in that direction. That's right. They they offensive had the offensive line is not great, but it's above average. All the skill players are elite level. Well, their their offensive line is is great at pass blocking. They like, just don't have to pass block long. They don't have to pass block long because like yeah. the, the guy can. But read I don't. Defenses. But they're 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 above average because the rest of the league is bad. Yeah. But no, just the schemes that they run. I don't know if Andy Reid could make this team much better though. No, I don't think no. I mean, no. Pat, I mean Patrick Mahomes is a far far better player as of right now than Baker. Well, he's had another year. I don't know that that one year is different. I, I think it helps. Okay. So we lump two players in there. I'm going to lump two teams together. Okay. I think the Panthers and the Chargers are the exact same team with different jerseys. I think they play the same style of football. I think they look the same play in the games. I the think Chargers one's got have an immensely no better passing quarterback. Well, okay, but one has the immensely better running quarterback. Which quarterback would you rather have? I'd rather have the one that can throw the football. Ooh, ooh, I don't know. Cam can throw it just fine, and and you never have to worry about third I, and Cam two. is a a front running quarterback. Like he's a, a, when ooh. things are going well. Oh, you sure? Because when they beat the Eagles a couple of weeks ago, they were down three touchdowns. No, I'm saying and when, he went when and I'm had saying three when the situation to drive. when the situation is good. Well, I don't know like, that that situation was good either. No, I'm not talking about, like, per game situation. I'm talking about just, like, the team itself. When the team around him feels good, things are going well, he can absolutely come back in games like that. I don't like, know. That's, after, after, after McCaffrey, who's, who's good on that team? I mean, who's really good? Yeah, I mean, you got a point. Like, uh, DJ Moore's pretty good. DJ Moore's good. He's, he's he not ain't, great. He ain't great. But, no, I mean, they, they just got a bunch of, they got a bunch of guys. Like and, I, and Cam, we, Cam we, is the alpha dog. We disagree on them having a bunch of guys. I, I don't know that I take Cam over Rivers in like if I've got to win this season. Well, that's that's but, what I'm talking but I, about. But I think it's close, and I and I can't tell you I wouldn't take Cam. I mean, no, I do think it's close. I think these but, teams are a lot alike. They play kind of the same kind of defense. They, I think, one is way better coached and probably has a lot better kicker in in the Panthers. But they both play down to like bad teams a lot and are. 
they, they like, the bad teams have to do like really dumb stuff for them to beat them. Yeah. But then when they play like okay average opponents that that are probably you would think closer to their level, they kind of kick their ass. Yeah. Like like I like both of these teams. I think they're without question they clear cut like second tier level teams out of the four elite teams in the NFL this year. Yeah. And and I think they're a lot of fun. I don't know that I remember seeing two teams not be at the top or not be at the bottom that just look so much alike. I mean, you got a point. I mean, it's weird for them to be like in the middle, but still almost identical in the way that they play football. We're going to learn a lot about the Panthers on on Thursday night. Well, yeah, but I mean, because like the Chargers, they lost to uh, to who the Rams and they've, uh, they've got two losses to and now the Chiefs. their now their losses are the two best losses in yeah, the NFL. And, and the Panthers lost to uh, what Washington, Washington and uh, no, 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 damn who they. I don't even remember. It was early in the season. Though. Yeah, it was oh, the really, Falcons. Yeah, the Falcons. Falcons. It was early, real early. So anyway, next, last two. What the hell is going on in Houston? Is this like dark magic? Is this voodoo? I mean, they're close they, enough to New Orleans. They is need this to voodoo? be sending out gift baskets to every other coach in the league. I mean, literally every game they play, they don't look great. That, that and the other team just gives them the win. Yeah, we and thought but, the Cowboys but, gave it to him. We thought the the Colts gave it to him. And this one, like Vance Joseph, not even playing for something better than a fifty-one yard field goal. We're just, doing we're doing this on Tuesday night. Why is Vance Joseph not fired right now? Why is he not the next coach gone? I have no idea. Right? I can't answer that. So so, let me bring you a different scenario. Are we sure John Elway's just? He's not the problem. Do you, do you think maybe he's just like done? Is he not the problem. He might be. So I have a philosophy. They they broke rule number one of great fandom and 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 historic lore. Okay, that that teams just never ever 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 should do. So years ago, I had one of my best friends when the Cubs were like on the cusp of being great, but they were still pretty good. But they were going through coach after coach after coach. He's man, I wish they would hire Mark Grace because he's like working his way through the minors, putting in the time in like. Everyone in Chicago loves him. And the first thing I said was, stop. That's the worst decision you could ever do. Because right now, every time he comes to Chicago, he's a god. He's yeah. an absolute legend. If you hire him to be your manager and he fails and you have to fire him, that's the last thing you're going to remember. And it's going to make him coming back to Chicago bad for the rest of time. The Knicks did it with uh, with Jackson. Yeah. Um, it, I just think these things Never, ever, ever work out. You don't bring the hero back. You don't bring the hero back because to give him a job because all he can do is hurt his legacy yeah. at that place. Well, and, and that's part of the problem is that the Bronco fans, uh, the majority of them do not think that he's the problem. No. They think, oh, he, he made some bad decisions, but he brought us the Super Bowl. I, I don't know how many media people who are supposed to be unbiased and, and not get caught up in these things hold him accountable and make him not the problem. He won him a Super Bowl. He went out and got Peyton Manning. Congratulations. Yeah. What other quarterback have you put in here? What other team have you built? By the way. It, look at the coaches that you've had here. Look, look, at, look at those – two Super Bowl teams that they had, like one won it and one lost it. Can you imagine any other team going from like highest rated offensive team in the league in one season and losing the Super Bowl and then the next season they're the highest rated defensive team with like a, a pretty blah offense? Yeah. I and like I mean it's that that what they did there was insane. Yeah. So I don't know that we'll ever see that again. No, I don't think we will either. I, I do think Elway is the problem, and sadly enough, I think it's going to hurt his legacy there. I don't think – I think that he's been there long enough and been bad enough at it when they finally do decide to say, hey, you might be the problem. I don't know that he'll ever be able to go back. And he'll always go back, and people will be kind and nice, and he'll be welcomed, but it won't be the, it won't be the worship. No. It, and that's, that's sad. I'm very much against that. So if you ever have an opportunity to do that, just don't. Just, yeah. Just stay away from yeah. it. Lastly, your Steelers look really good. They look like they've turned a corner. What are they going to do with the Le'Veon Bell situation? Because he, he's got to come back or, or he loses the year. 
Well, I, I don't know. So I I heard a report this week that because of his veteran status, he technically doesn't have to come back at all this year. Um, and if he doesn't, like he can still be a free agent. I, I completely disagree with that. I don't. But I, I'm, like I'm almost I, positive because I follow the story pretty closely. I'm almost positive that's not correct. I mean, if 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 they bring him back, I mean, yeah, you got to play him. Like, but how much? Like, I don't think you take a whole lot of carries away from from Connor. I, I and I'm I'm shocked that he didn't come back in early enough to be able to be once he saw Connor was doing well to be traded. Uh, yeah. Because why would he not try to? get one or two games under his belt and let teams say, okay, let's go get him and and make a move at him or whatnot. It, it doesn't make any sense as Cause why you, he didn't I think come back you here. Got him, I think you could have got him for like a fourth or fifth round pick. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not like they're asking for a King's ransom because they know you're going to have to pay him on the back end. Yeah. They know that you're going to end up having to pay him a boatload of money. So like They're just so looking to get something. So this is something that Jason Lockenfora brought up today on the Tony Kornheiser show. I was listening to that. Interesting enough, the Steelers could technically, if he comes back and plays, so let's say he comes back and plays week 10 through 6, okay? Okay. The franchise tag is you have to pay him 120% of their salary, right? Okay. You franchise tag him a second time, you pay him 140% of their salary, which is crazy and nobody ever really does it. Except the Redskins. The legal standing for a salary is, is what a player has been paid. So if he shows up and plays week si- uh, 10 through 16, or 17, all right, and he, or he, get, he gets the six games in for the legal season, and he only makes $7 million, they could franchise tag him again next year for 140% of the $7 million, which is a bargain. Uh, Yeah. Wow. So now he sits out two years or he plays for a ham sandwich for what he truly is worth. <laughs> How insane would that be? And being like the legal, but like I like Le'Veon, I want to see him play. Being like the legal junkie that I am, I really want this to happen. Like I want them to say, we're going to franchise tag you again. And technically you only made $7 million last year. So here's $10 million. Last year you could have signed for fourteen. Here's ten. Here's nine. Here's whatever one forty is of this. I am congratulations. Curious. Like, are the Steelers petty enough to do it? Oh, I I would because you can't replace. You're talking about trying to win championships. While he might be pissed off, he realizes now they got me. I got to go play and I got to go get my money for the next year deal, and 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 we're done. But that is interesting. I had not I, like I don't think that, that anybody's ever really thought about that. That is Jason Lockenford. That dude. There's there's a reason I follow that guy and I listen to everything he said. That guy's really smart. He knows the league inside and out, and he talks to people that know this type of stuff. I mean Ooh. that's that's crazy to even think about. Yeah, I will tell you this. That is a Belichick move. If there's ever if you want to become the Patriots, you got to do moves like that because yeah. that's hardcore. Yeah, that's that's real. That's gonna that's hurt your feelings. Stuff. But that's how you get. That's, that's how, how you, you build get stuff done. Yeah. So, all right. That the uh, that's, that's my it. recap, brother. All right. Uh, NFL recap week number nine. Finito. Remember tunicatravel.com and winningcureseverything.com. Who?